Tonight in Oklahoma City, two teams tangle for one spot in the championship series. Florida State or Tennessee looking for a date with top-seeded Oklahoma. The intensity of this truth is so sharp, and you can feel it pressing against your heart like a blade. I think if we can play Florida State softball, we're ready to take on anyone. At this stage, it's just survive in advance. Any role model you've ever followed has known the agony of get it done or get out. Jumping Josie secures the win for the Bulls. Summon all the fire and focus inside yourself as if there were never to be another game. Malloy back to the wall and robs a home run. The best teams don't get lost in the reverie of the final game. They stay focused on the business of this one. It's win or walk away. Welcome to the NCAA Women's College World Series presented by Capital One. Congratulations to the top seeded suitors. They needed extra innings, but they got it done. Four to two, T.R.A. Jennings with the game winner in the ninth inning. They advance to the finals for the fourth year in a row, and the win streak is now at 51 consecutive. And so Oklahoma is into the champ series, which gets underway on Wednesday. Who will be there with them? Florida State? Well, they need one win tonight. Tennessee would need to win a double header tonight to move on. And hi, everybody. We welcome you to Hall of Fame Stadium. I'm Beth Mowens with our Olympic gold medalist, Michelle Smith, Jessica Mendoza, Hall of Famer. Holly Rowe is down on the field. We've got a pair of champions tussling today. And here's the thing to remember. Florida State is the 2-0 team here. And 76% of the time in the national semis, that 2-0 team moves on. So a tough task ahead for Tennessee. In particular, Jess, because those champs, the Seminoles, well, they've got all the tools to get the job done tonight. Yeah, exactly. How did they get 2-0? How did they get to this point in the semifinals? And you look at the combination, first of all, the complement of pitching staff and how they've utilized the different tools, the analytics to get here, plus the defense. It's Josie Buckley getting up here in Oklahoma City. But this has been a part of their story, how they get it done. And how about the two games they played? Game one, they win it with power, the pop, the home runs. Game two, yeah, it's on the ground. It's the speed. They have more stolen bases here than anyone else in Oklahoma City. And that combination, Beth, is what has allowed it to be in the driver's seat here in Oklahoma City. Yeah, they get the win tonight, and they will be playing for their second national championship in the last five years. On the other side, Tennessee looking for that first elusive uh, title, Michelle. And they have a championship pedigree as well because they won the SEC both regular season yep. and tournament, and they can match the Knowles head to head. Hey, when you get to this level, you're a complete team, and Tennessee is exactly the way they need to be because they have strong pitchers in the circle. They have a great freshman in Carlin Pickens, Peyton Gottschall with a spinny curveball, and Ashley Rogers, she's been a stud her entire career with an amazing jumpy rise ball. But it's Kiki Malloy, 25 home runs on the year, 40 stolen bases. It's power, it's speed, oh, and it's thievery. Look at the way that she can steal home runs, she can steal base hits. Kiki Malloy is the engine that drives this Tennessee team. They have been outstanding, and Peyton Gottschall will be in the circle this evening. Best ERA on the team in the NCAA. The two starters tonight transferred up from smaller schools, hoping for a moment like this tonight with a spot in the finals at stake, Florida State and Tennessee. Well, it has been done before. In fact, four times in the last four years, a team has come out of the loser's bracket to win both semifinals to get into the champ series. And twice, a team not only has come out of the loser's bracket to get there, but then gone on to win it all. As we check out the Capital One starting lineup for the Florida State Seminoles, led in the postseason by Devin Flaherty with that 409 batting average. She's got four stolen bases. They love to wreak havoc with their offense. That is BB, SB, and 2B. Walk, steal a base, and have somebody double you home. And Peyton Gottschall, the moment she 
has been looking forward to since she transferred into Knoxville from Bowling Green, where she is a former MAC Pitcher of the Year out of Massillon, Ohio. She's 3-0 so far in this NCAA tournament. One relief appearance here at the World Series against Alabama in their opener, and she gets the ground out of Mudge to start things off. Well, Gotchal's going to attack the zone with a couple different types of pitches, the rise ball in the upper half, a curve ball that she'll use away to righties, and also a drop ball that she will really hammer the lower part of the zone. But it's this curve ball. Look at the rotation on that. It's going to spin like a top. It's going to run away from the righties into the lefties, and you can see swing and misses primarily toward the top half of the zone, but also on that opposite side corner. So a lot of pitchers will throw arm side heavy. She likes to expand the zone and come into lefties away from righties. In the number two spot in the lineup, Janai Kerr. She was the oh. best hitter in the starting lineup during the regular season out of Mableton, Georgia. 357 during the year. Looking for a, a breakout at bat in the postseason. Just two hits her last 19 at bats. And we see it go both ways here. You know, you start to press. You, you're very aware of the fact that it's been a while since you've seen first base. You know how important being in that two hole. What you can't do is start chasing pitches and being something bigger than you've been all regular season. Still on the warm side tonight at Hall of Fame Stadium here in Oklahoma City. Mid 80s. On uh, what has been a hot and humid day, some storms in the area earlier. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it feels like is pushing 90 tonight. Fly ball out to left, Riley West, two down. Head coach for the Knowles now in her 15th season, Lonnie Alameda, who's going into the Hall of Fame. Coming up in December, the regular season and tournament champs, they have been the dominant force in the ACC. They are 7-1 in this NCAA tournament, 2-0 here with a run rule win over Oklahoma State and then a 3-1 win over Washington. They have a little leeway. If they lose the first one, they will still be back to play in a second game tonight. If they win this first one, it's done. They advance, and Tennessee is out. And interesting, we talk all the time, guys, about the choices that coaches have to make with their pitching staff. Neither ace gets the start tonight. Let's see if these batting orders can take advantage of that. This is Kaylee Harding. And neither ace started the earlier game, Oklahoma and Stanford, but both aces came into that game. As it went long and it was tied. Florida State. Because they've stayed in the winner's bracket, they had the day off yesterday. Tennessee had to play and win yesterday. After opening up with a victory over Alabama, they then lost to Oklahoma before beating Oklahoma State last night. Ashley Rogers, the ace, threw over 130 pitches. So Karen Weekly goes with Gottschall in the circle. Well, she does have that complete staff. We talked about a really good fiery freshman. Obviously, Peyton Gottschall has a little bit more poise, the senior transfer. But Ashley Rogers, uh, it's great to see her mostly healthy in her senior year. Great game last night. Yeah, with the addition of Gottschall and Pickens, she has been able to get much more rest this year, stay healthy. She nicked up a little bit recently, but didn't seem to bother her yesterday. Well, that's probably the key, Beth. You know, last year she was struggling to get through SEC tournament regionals. They got bounced early, and she just didn't have the energy in her legs. 2-2 Two -two Harding got under it. Another fly ball. This time it's Kiki Malloy calling it. And a 1-2-3 start 
Lady Vols picking up the bats when we come back. Getting set to, uh, to check out the Lady Vols starting lineup brought to you by Capital One. So much production comes right at the top with Kiki Malloy and Zeta Puni who have combined this year for 38 home runs and 115 RBI. They will try and set the tone early against Mac Leonard out in the circle. And what a moment for her, the senior from Normal, Illinois, now in her second year at Florida State after transferring in from Illinois State. This will be her first career World Series start. Well, Mac Leonard, heavy drop ball at the lower half of the zone, has given up just two home runs this year. Probably part of the reason she's getting the, the nod here, keeping the ball in the park. She had a couple of starts earlier in this NCAA tournament. They didn't use her a whole lot the second half of the season. In fact, this will be just her fifth start since March. But they love her experience and her ability to keep the ball in the yard. Also gives them a good bat in the lineup because she will stay in the batting order where she was their best hitter during ACC play this year. Our first look at Kiki Malloy. 25 home runs on the season. That was best in the country this year. It is also just one shy of the SEC single season record and a laser to Josie Muffley makes the snag at short. So we talked about it off the top. Senior Josie Muffley all smiles there, but it's been the defense, and she's done this a few times, taking away a hit. How about Kiki Malloy, though? She crushes this one. And the reaction, exactly how you feel. You almost see it as a base hit getting through. That'll bring up Pooney. Zeta is the transfer from Oklahoma, so she was on their national championship team a couple years ago. Hitting 417 in the postseason with five homers and 14 runs batted in. That is more than anybody else in this postseason. One from Leonard. Kerr going back, and she will watch it go out. Zeta Pooney, solo home run. And Tennessee jumps in front. Boy, and that is just the third home run of the year that Mac Leonard has given up. This is an elevated pitch. Starts on the outer half, and Pooney's so good at letting this ball travel, and you're going to see it's going to be the same thing. It's an elevated drop ball. It's at her belt. Let's get bashed, Jess. Yeah, what Zayna Pooney does such a great job was getting this one deep in power. Not many hitters can have that much power to that part of the field as a right-handed batter. Her sixth home run of this NCAA tournament, and Pooney gives Tennessee the lead in their must-win game tonight against Florida State to force an if-necessary game, which would be later this evening. So nobody's hit more out. Nobody has driven more runs in than Zeta. The junior out of Carson, California. That is her first home run here in OKC. 14th home run for Pooney, so when you look at Kiki Malloy and Zeta Puni, the two of them at the top of the order. I mean, that, that's a tall task, keeping the ball in the yard. By the way, she may not be done yet. She already yeah. has a pair of games this postseason uh, with two taters. Well, and they're just so great, too, because she's so good at letting the ball travel. She gets pitched outside a lot, but she has that power to, look, to hit the ball to the opposite field, just like Kiki Malloy. Kiki will spray her home runs as well. They're, they're just very disciplined hitters. 
with hitting the pitch that comes. They don't try to pull the outside pitch. They don't try to yank it over the left field fence. They let it come in and they hammer it right side. So of course now the Monday morning quarterback begins quickly yeah. as to whether or not Florida State, that's McKenna Reed who was up in the bullpen. She has been their reliever throughout the year. But they go with Mac Leonard instead of the ace, Cat Sandercock, as the starter. Cat is 2-0 and oh in this tournament here in OKC. Well, and we've already seen it with the first two hitters. Malloy with that rocket to shortstop and then the home run. I mean, typically, Leonard, she's going to induce 83% of her outs on the ground. She has pitched to contact. She uses her defense behind her. But those first two batters, her pitches have been elevated. Yeah, just the third home run Ooh. she's given up all year. And trust me, when you're a down ball, drop ball pitcher, you cannot be elevated. You have to miss in the direction of your pitch. So when you're throwing a drop, you got to miss low. You cannot miss high. Always remember that for young pitchers. Miss in the direction of your pitch. And now the walk to Boo Gibson. And it may be decision time much sooner than Lonnie thought. Well, and this is a perfect example of when Mac Leonard is on, swings and misses the heat map right here. It's in the lower half of the zone and specifically outside to righties. Those pitches have been high, they've been elevated, they've been mid-strike level, and that's the reason they've gotten hit hard. That'll bring up Riley West to hit a three-run home run to beat Alabama in the opening game here for the Lady Vols. Junior out of Eastvale, California. Batting in the five spot in the order. Outside the bag at third. Rolling past Karen Wheatley. And you see the numbers on Riley. Sixth time in the, the semifinals for Tennessee. They've reached the championship series twice under Karen and her husband, Ralph Weekly, who was the longtime co-head coach with her here. Goes the opposite way. Hallie Waycaser is there, two down. Everything's been hit hard. That's well, definitely Got to be concerned for Lonnie Alameda in the dugout. We're just getting out of this inning. You see two flyouts. You see the big home run. You got to remember too, Tennessee. Once they saw that it was Mac Leonard, they're gonna they're being coached. Look up in the zone. Look for something more elevated. Don't chase down. I've always been a firm believer, too. When you don't see that ace in the circle, your offense is a little more like, yes. I was going to say, yeah. There's a little bit of a boost. And as we referenced earlier, Florida State knows all about these semifinals. Twice they have been in Tennessee's shoes in recent years, and twice they have swept the semifinals to come out of the loser's bracket to advance. Mackenzie Donahue, who uh, along with Zeta Pooney, started out her career here at Oklahoma, down the street in Norman. Left in the middle of last year and landed in Knoxville. One for six so far in the World Series. Ground ball to Muffley. She'll gobble that up, play to first, but the home run ball gets Tennessee in front. Zeta Pooney, she's been one of the best hitters for the regular season. She's been the best hitter for Tennessee here in the postseason. She's doubled her slug from 500 to 1,100. Another big one there for the Pooney. 
Well, Florida State has made some dynamic plays here on this field defensively. In fact, it was back in 2018 when one of the best plays we have ever seen here on this field at the Women's College World Series helped them advance and win the championship. Yes, it was Jesse, Jesse Warren, one of the best plays we've ever seen. That dive from third base stopped the Huskies in their track. One of the most iconic plays we've ever seen. Couldn't help but think back to it when on Saturday. How about this? Josie Muffley in the air. What a gorgeous play firing up these Seminoles. She even talked to Jesse Warren. Jesse said, welcome to the double play club. And she said, all caps, Josie effing Muffley. She just did another one here today. And it is so dynamic, guys. These type of plays, laying it all out for your team, it fuels the fire. And we saw Florida State stay in that winner's bracket thanks to a great defensive play. Seems like a little deja yes, vu. Yes, I'm sure the middle name stood for firefighter. That's what Josie wants to be after her softball playing days are done. Josie firefighting muffling. Yes, yes. <laughs> Four, five, and six do up. So there you see the Florida State comparison to that championship team wow. in 2018. The scoring is up a little bit so far for this group of Knowles. The ERA similar, of course. They started out the series with a pitching staff, and then Megan King took over and led them to the championship. Megan threw 33 in the third innings, went 4-0, and allowed one earned run in that World Series in 2018. Edenfield, Flaherty, and Leonard coming up. <laughs> Michaela also hit a home run for the Knowles in that Alabama win to start things off here. One of her two round trippers in this NCAA tournament. Gottschall's supposed to be a curveball in the outer half, misses that pitch low. You see the way that Julia Kutsuyanopoulos, the catcher, had to go down and get it. Edenfield reaches for one. Back it goes and out. Michaela Edenfield, the solo home run to tie it up. And so this is a 3-2 pitch. So Gottschall's trying to work her away on a 2-2 count. And she ends up losing this pitch low. It's supposed to be a curveball. So look at this pitch. It's supposed to be way out. It ends up going right down the middle of the plate. It's 3-2 now. She puts this ball too sweet. It's all on the white part of the plate. And all because that pitch prior, she was low. She missed in the zone. She had to come back trying to throw the strike on the outer half, that curveball that Edenfield just catches up to and bashes. So from a pitcher's point of view, missed pitch prior opportunity for Edenfield to drive it out of the park. Second home run for her here in Oklahoma City. And we are even with a couple of home runs aside. Here's Devin Flaherty. Devin's been their best hitter during the postseason, 409. And in the win the other day over UW, she had two hits and scored twice. Well, it's just interesting the way they were throwing Edenfield. They were working that screwball underneath her hands, but primarily working that outer half. And you, know, you miss that 2-2 pitch, and it puts you as a pitcher in a pinch. And sometimes you just you lay the ball a little bit too close. Edenfield, you can't. She's got great reach, Jess. Say, can we just talk about Michaela Edenfield for a second? Because <laughs> her lower half on that was sold on something inside. That was all upper half. That is how strong. Michaela, Michaela Edenfield is second home run in this World Series. It is not easy to hit it out here because of the pitching. We've seen the numbers. She is the first with two home runs here. 14 home runs in the World Series from 13 different players so far. Let's set it down to Holly. Well, as you may have noticed, Michaela Edenfield is shooting for the stars, literally. She does custom makeup for every single game. 
with different themes, whether it's space themed with moons and stars trying to hit Area 51 where she hits her home runs. Tonight, it is stars with the pride colors. She wants to make sure and represent Pride Month this month, but she's always doing something sassy, something special, and um, my makeup tonight may or may not be inspired by her as well. <laughs> Nice backhand at second by Lair Boutte, who has returned to the lineup tonight at second base for Tennessee out of the concussion protocol. Well, she was looking in. Watch her lower half. It goes and opens up. And now watch, she's actually ahead of this. This is almost all. You see how she just reaches out. You want to know how strong she is? Her lower half was thinking inside, her upper half hitting that ball out of the park. It was so impressive. When you see hitters get beat like that, yeah. Beth, it's a pop fly. Yeah. Well, the one thing Lonnie Alameda always reminds us is she's in that lineup because one swing can change a game. Even if it may not be the best swing, she's got the power to take it out. Four. Well, and that's why as a pitcher, too, when you see that a hitter can still hit that, you have to expand the zone. You've got to let that pitch run. or you have to throw the screwball underneath so that you're sawing her off on the inner half. Well, for Peyton Gottschall, in her three innings of relief work against Alabama the other day, she did give up four hits and three earned runs and a home run. Let's see how she settles back in. That's the 10th home run of the year that she's given up. She's almost the complete opposite. We talked about Mac Leonard rolls 83% ground balls. Gottschall's the complete opposite. I mean, she's because she's more curve uh, in and out and then a little bit of rise ball as well. She only rolls about 21% ground balls. <laughs> Leonard at the plate this NCAA tournament just two for 23. Right back to Gotcha, a nice backhand, two down. Peyton threw a no hitter in the regional for Tennessee. They beat Northern Kentucky. They love the, her addition, not just for the way she pitches, but she is a fiery competitor. She will uh, wear her emotion on a sleeve out there in the circle. Ball. Well, when she gets rolling, there is a determination in her face. She, we asked her when we got to talk to her this last week, and she's like, it's like an anger. She's like, I'm like screaming in my head. And I was like, yeah, I wouldn't want to face this. <laughs> I get that. Well, her walk-up song's a little metal-ish. Oh, heavy metal, sure. Motorhead. Yeah. Triple H's walk-out song. Help, helped her get a couple of wins in the SEC tournament for Tennessee, where she was side-by-side -side with Ashley Rogers. Very complimentary duo. Hallie Waycaser lines it out to Malloy out in center. So after the home run, three straight outs recorded, but Michaela sends one out to Area 51 to even it up. They got that out here in Oklahoma City. The pretty paint on the face. And how about painting that outside corner with a barrel? I don't care. Lower half, where you go, upper half, you're going out of here. And that's what Edenfield just did. Well, earlier today in our first semifinal matchup, Tiare Jennings, after they walked Jada Coleman to get to her, she brings Jada home. And another teammate as well, a two-run double in the top of the ninth inning. And Oklahoma streak lives another day. It is now up to 51 in a row for the Sooners. That's the fourth time during the streak they have had to win in their final at bat. It's the second big threat to the streak in this NCAA tournament. But they are back looking for the three-peat. And they will face the winner of this matchup. Florida State needs one win tonight. Tennessee needs two. They have the day off tomorrow, and the championship series starts primetime Wednesday night. Best two out of three. Jamison Brockenbro getting things started in the second. Six, seven, and eight coming up. 
scored their run in the first on a Zeta Pooney solo home run. Leonard already in the inning, a little more dialed in. Those drop balls located at the at the knee, a little bit lower in the zone, not hanging them as much. She's never started a game in the World Series. Mm -hmm. With that first inning to settle in. Yeah. Chop to second. There it is there, one down. Brackenbro and, and now Lair Boutte, the only two lefties in the lineup tonight. Brockenbro up and out. Leonard. That 0 2 pitch, a little bit low in the zone. She went down and got it. So I think that's the key a lot of times for drop ball pitchers. You have to make them elevate those pitches. Figure out what the umpire is calling, where the strike zone is. <laughs> and if you're getting that as a drop ball pitcher, you're like, money. <laughs> I was thinking the exact opposite. <laughs> It's all perspective, Jess. <laughs> As a hitter, if you know below the knee is called. Yeah, you got to catch it before it gets down there. Oh, Wanda Boutte. She's had a couple of appearances as a pinch hitter here at the World Series, but back in the starting lineup for the first time since the regionals. Coming back from concussion protocol. Destiny Rodriguez, who filled in for her, turned into their best hitter the last couple of weeks. She was terrific. In fact, the bottom of this Tennessee lineup has been productive throughout the postseason. I was surprised that Destiny Rodriguez wasn't in this lineup because she's been one of their best hitters. Hit 400 in the tournament. Coming in, hadn't started in any game, played much, and then Blair Boutet went down. She probably would be first off the bench in a potential pinch hit situation. Muffley stays low, two down. Hey, the ESPN Films latest 30 for 30 is the luckiest guy in the world. The four-part series takes an unprecedented look into the life of NBA Hall of Famer Bill Walton. Episodes one and two premiere tomorrow at 8 Eastern on ESPN. Julia Kutsoyanopoulos, the starting catcher, will step in. And they go back to the right-handers. Not a whole lot of difference for Matt Leonard against righties or lefties in terms of opponent's batting average. So you may not be playing that game as much. Well, we've seen from a lot of pitchers that throw the ball up in the zone, they're one side of the plate. And for Matt Leonard, she will move it pretty well, that drop ball to both sides of the plate. Well, nothing but strikes this inning. Ball for him. Did it again. Christina Drum is behind the plate tonight. Megan Rabin at first. Robbie Guest at second. Danny Bowman, our third base umpire. Two and one. Out of Mission Viejo, California, started out her career at Arizona, where she came here twice. So this is her third Women's College World Series in three years. Gets herself in a leverage count at three and one. She's the one bat Tennessee really needs to wake up. Two hits in her last 41 ABs. We can get her going, obviously making a big difference in the lower half of the lineup here. One of those hits was a like, inside the park home run. Yeah. And she draws the walk. Go ahead is aboard for Tennessee with two outs for Katie Taylor. Three thirty-three so far in this NCAA tournament. First pitch swinging. 
and 68 miles an hour for Mac. Mac really continuing to nibble in that lower half of the zone, and for for Tennessee, that's where you have to really give a good look. Don't want to continue to chase on those downstairs, you know, pitches you're just playing into Mac Leonard's hand. Speed just missed. Ball sighting from Mac Leonard. You don't see those very often. <laughs> Slow roll to the right side. Flaherty gets there over to Bethany Keene, the starter at first base tonight. And the side is retired. Two innings in the books, all even in the semis at one apiece. Oh, now uh, the Tennessee coach is getting together to talk about whether they want to review, and looks like they will not. So as I was saying, deja vu, we're even at one apiece in the national semis. All right, we have sustenance to carry us through the night. Will it be one game? Maybe two games, we don't know. If it's one game, that means Florida State has won. If it's two games, that means Tennessee has won this one. And we will play again later on. Florida State National Champions 2018. Tennessee looking for their first national championship. They've been to the finals on two other occasions. Once with Monica Abbott and company back in 2007, the other with the Renfro sisters and Maddie Shipman, 2013. That team lost to Oklahoma. And of course, the top seeded Sooners are into the finals as Bethany Keene blasts one. And Bethany Keene, who is only starting at first base because Mac Leonard is pitching, just grabbed the lead. First home run of the year for Bethany Keene. That's your eight hole. <laughs> Not a ton of at-bats throughout the season, as you mentioned, Beth. She's only had eight at-bats in the entire NCAA tournament. No home runs all year. But what does it matter? She hits this one to put her team ahead, driving a pitch on the outside corner out to right center field. Even a look on her face. Oh, I love it. Man, she was all over that inside pitch, Jess. You can tell, you can tell when they're hunting, right, inside, and they just turn on it. That was beautiful. Well, how about that? The transfer from South Florida has just hit her first home run as a Seminole. Smitty, you had your afternoon, your pitcher's duel. That was nice. <laughs> Mendoza is apparently uh, taking over this evening. A nice play on the run in foul territory by Boutte to get there. Three runs on the board, all home runs so far tonight. This may be one of the most unexpected home run ball deliveries we've seen in a while. Those are the most fun, though. Uh, congratulations to you, Bethany Keene and family. The tradition here at the World Series. That's her first home run since May of 2021. <laughs> oh, wow. man. Oh. That's, that's 24, 25 months ago. Not an everyday starter. Ah! 
So while there's a conversation going on out in the circle, we'll get you caught up on what started out today as four teams still in the chase. Oklahoma eliminated Stanford this afternoon and did it in extra innings, four to two. Tiare Jennings, the two-run double. So the quest for the three-peat continues as the Sooners are back in the champ series for the fourth year in a row. That's our bracket update brought to you by Enterprise. And it will be, let's see, 108 days when they take the field for game one of the champ series since they last lost their only loss of the year to Baylor back on February 19th. As it stands right now, folks, the Sooners at 59 and one are current holders of the best single season record in softball history. Mm. Just rolling, continue to roll. The last 10 years at the World Series, Oklahoma is 35 and 11 with five national titles. When you talk about a championship series, the winner of this one would have to beat them two out of three. So in the last decade, only two teams have beaten Oklahoma here twice in the same World Series. UCLA did it in the finals in 2019. UW did it opening day and then in the semifinals 2018. Doug went on to play Florida State in the champ series and lost to Florida State. Florida State winning that first national championship for them in the ACC. Tall task indeed, but the Sooners have already been involved now in a couple of nail biters. Top three and top of the order here. Mudge, fair ball. Gonna be at least two with her speed. She'll hold there. And the team that has hit the most doubles in America hits another one. This is one of those more level, kind of tomahawk coming on top of the ball type swing. It's a pitch up in the zone. Instead of trying it, a lot of times you see swings come underneath the ball. This one comes from on top to even. Yeah, Betty for Florida That's Kaylee Mudge's swing four. path. Fourth Jenny double in the NCAA tournament for Kaylee Mudge. And this is what Florida State does. The queens of doubles. Hundred and twenty second double of the year for that Florida State program. We got a pitching change here for Tennessee. Back in a moment with the freshman Carlin Pickens. Carlin Pickens coming on. The SEC freshman of the year was dynamite the first half of the season. It's been a different story the last half for Carlin. And that includes a loss here at the World Series to Oklahoma. Well, Pickens can throw with great velocity. She'll be mid-70s. She's got a screwball. She'll work underneath the hands. Look at the way this ball is going to tumble out. So it corkscrews, and that's going to run away from lefties into righties. But the key for Carlin Pickens is working from ahead. When she gets behind, she's been having issues with free passes. You can see how she really hammers that inside corner to righties, outside to lefties. That's where she gets the majority of her swing and miss. She also does have an elite changeup, which helps her when she is working that pitch well. And so if she can work that changeup, work that screwball in the inner half, she can be tough. Janai Kerr will step in, run around second. Let's send it down to Mudge. Ball hit her, sliding into third. She will stay there okay. on the base. And now 60 feet away from tacking on another one. Mudge stealing on the pitch. No hesitation whatsoever. This is like old school too, show bunt. Steal third base to pull. Make sure you're pulling the third baseman Zeta Pooney up in a race with Mackenzie Donahue to get there. Knowles with their 15th steal of the tournament. Holly? Well, guys, there was a lot of consternation about Karen Weekly's decision on who she started against Oklahoma and what ended up being a run rule game. And I had a long conversation with her about those decisions. She said, look, I have all the information about what's going on with my pitchers, my student athletes. 
there may be things that she is managing that the outside world doesn't know. And she said, I own all of those decisions, but I told our kids in the locker room, listen, everybody's going to have questions for you coming out of this locker room, even your parents. But you just have to trust us. We know what we're managing. So as you see these decisions for the Tennessee pitching situation, just know there's a lot more information out there that some of it Karen Weekly is keeping private. Thank you very much, Holly. Of course, today, that it really wasn't a decision, guys, at least this initial game, because Rogers threw, what, 138 pitches in the win yesterday. Yeah, and, and throughout her career, she has battled some injuries. And yep. We spoke to Karen Weekly at Super Regionals. You know, Rogers has been on pitch count. She's had to use her gingerly. Kerr, unable to hold up. Two down. And this is all velocity. This is low to mid-70s. Screwball in the outer half, and Kerr from that left side is just going to bite at a pitch that continues to run away from her. As we see Ashley Rogers running out to the bullpen. So it uh, wasn't a situation where they wanted to start Ashley today, but obviously more than ready to bring her out of the pen in a game they have to win to extend to an if necessary no, game later. No. Pooney will hustle it over to first and got it. Took a bad hop. She cleaned it up. Side retired, but another deep fly ball that didn't stay in. Bethany King, the lefty, looking for something on the inner half and gets it her first home run of the year. Look at the way she just rotates on, barrels it up, gets it out of the yard. A big home run for Bethany King to put Florida State on top and the Seminoles loving it. Two to one, our score, Florida State with the lead over Tennessee. If the score holds, the Seminoles are into the championship series. And uh, they will make a pitching change from Mac Leonard through the first two innings, from the senior to the freshman, McKenna Reed. And for McKenna, 41 appearances on the season, 37 of those out of the bullpen. Reed, the freshman, could throw with good velocity, rise ball, so they've been looking at Leonard in the lower half of the zone with that drop ball. Now all of a sudden they're going to see Reed with that rise ball, upper half, left side. So Leonard goes one time through the batting order, and here's Kiki Malloy who lined out, saw only one pitch her first time up. And uh, this is a... Uh, Fearsome group at the top. These three with the best combined OPS of any trio in the country. Oh, by the way, Katherine Sandercock also warming up in the bullpen. So we'll see if perhaps Lonnie's idea is throw each of them for a couple of innings. I like the ball on the left. Sandra Cock on the right. They've used seven different pitchers yeah. this year. Not as many in the postseason. They've relied much more on Sandra Cock, but looks like multiple arm usage tonight. And a big strikeout for Reed to sit Malloy down. Reed can really bend the ball, especially on that outer half to righties. She throws from behind her back, and this is a rise ball, but it also has a little bit of up and in, and you can see the way it's going to start more on the chalk or the, or the river on the outer half, and it's going to climb up and in toward the outside corner of the plate, but that's a really good rise ball. Look at that opposing batting average. Only Ashley Rogers of Tennessee with a better one. And oh, by the way, Rogers also loosening up in the pen. So both aces, even though they didn't start today, might be called upon. She's out there with uh, Megan Rhodes Smith, their pitching coach. Zeta hit the home run, deep center field, her first time out. Such a beautiful swing because it's so strong. She actually doesn't get very long at all. Short to the ball. 
Chris Malvo, the hitting coach for the Volunteers, done a really good job with this team and their offense. Now Reed to back of Malloy and Pooney and, and just hammering that corner. It looks like the umpire. Did they call an illegal pitch or they bring in Zeta back? It was called by the uh, third base umpire, Danny Bowman. Our rules analyst, Christy Cornwell. Yeah, there are two issues with the pitcher's footwork. Uh, the left foot is not starting on the front of the rubber, and the back foot is sliding after she's taken her signal. So she's illegal in two different ways. She's got to clean that up. See it slide forward there before she releases. Slightly, uh, so she starts with the heel on the rubber. So when she starts to push forward, the heel comes off the pitching rubber before she's in movement going forward. And then the we call the pivot foot slightly off the ground. So instead of the strikeout, it's a ball and a one-two count. Pooney, the grounder, backhanded Flaherty. Two out. Some of the uh, some of the alums, including one of the stars of their championship team, Sydney Sherrill, front and center. She, uh, that's Megan King next to her as well. Sydney uh, narrated our tees pregame. Danielle Watson there. Ball. With two down, it's Boo Gibson. This is a stretch where Tennessee is looking for better production. There are three, four, five, six hitters behind Malloy and Pooney, hitting just 172 here at the World Series. Holly? Well, you see Sydney Sherrill there in the front row. She played on this field for Florida State. Really great athlete for them, but she's from Moore, Oklahoma, about 10 miles down the road. She had the entire team over to dinner at her parents' house, hosted almost 30 people. And the folks I talked to that went said they had a great time, just a way to connect and really let you know that this Florida State family is all softball, all family, and there's a lot of love. She's having her best time out here supporting and cheering, just like so many other alum have done with her. Thank you, Holly. And uh, a second illegal pitch has been called on Reed and a warning to Lonnie Alamedia, who was really giving it to the umpire. And we're told now that also the assistant, Travis Wilson, from the dugout was issued a warning. So two illegal pitches called on Reed. I mean, this is huge. I, well, I believe the only two we've had called so far. Correct, this, yes. Yeah. Which is, whew. And we've seen her throw all year, and she has not been called oh. for those illegal pitches. So, and been other, quite a few other pitchers whose pivot foot have been off the ground. They yeah. haven't called those. I remember she's a freshman. I mean, this is, this is a lot. Well, she's not, it's not been called here in Oklahoma City, and now it has to think about her left heel. Which, when you have so many moving parts, so many things going on, that is the last thing you want to be concentrating your energy on. So Boo Gibson draws the two-out walk. Second time she's done that today. Yeah. 
tell the way that that when she comes back, that toe comes up. As long as that heel stays on the pitching rubber, she's she's fine. I don't know how she makes that adjustment right now, though. Well, you slide your foot back further on the pitching rubber so that you're not leaving the rubber. So it's two different things. And then she's working to drive her hips or her weight more down instead of up. And sometimes as a rise ball pitcher, you have a tendency to go up so you can come back down to get underneath the rise ball. So you, if you've noticed, everything that she's been throwing now have been pitches low in the zone, not the rise ball. They've been on that lower outer half. Ground ball up the middle, base hit. Runners on the corners here with two outs for Tennessee. But you can tell it's obviously affecting her velocity, her ability to elevate the pitch in the zone. And that's a delayed dead ball. That's a legal pitch that they called again. Yeah, I don't see her making the adjustment. I mean, I see her trying, but if they're calling it because her heel, yeah, it's still off the rubber. Tennessee could choose to accept the play, which ends up being the single. The third illegal pitch this inning in the national semifinals. Pinch runner at third base for Tennessee. That'll be Riley Masuse. Reminder too, we will have Holly Rowe talking with Lonnie Alameda. In-game interview coming up after the break. One run lead in jeopardy. Here's Mackenzie Dye swing and a miss. I, I mean, I hate this for McKenna Reed right now because it's it's so hard to change now. But the front foot on the rubber is an easy switch. That's it. That's an easy change. You basically, she's been healing up her foot on the rubber. Now she just has to come in. And mid. now it's the first base umpire calling yeah. an illegal pitch. Yeah. Take a look at the back foot. Susan at third, West at first. That's fired up the Florida State fan base. They're trying to come to Reed's defense. One, two pitch. And coach, that was a challenging inning there for your young pitcher. How or can she correct this illegal pitch situation that's happening right now? Well, I'll tell you, we've had one illegal pitch all year. And so um, if it's a tactic right now, that's awesome. But wow, so proud that as a freshman in this environment, she can relax and just do her thing, right? So that's pretty awesome poise on her side. Um, you know, I think sometimes maybe she moves her back foot a little bit. But, you know, she's been out in front before and nothing's ever been called. So the consistency factor. But yeah, keep doing what we do. Yeah, given that they're calling that, how does that impact your coaching decision with who you'll bring into the circle next inning? Uh, 
I mean, we have uh, our whole bullpen ready to go, and you know, I think if we can get a couple more runs, and you know, Cat could be ready to go to finish out this. So, but we know this is going to be a dog fight. They're a great team, you know, so a lot of fun. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Holly. Well, and I love one of the veterans there right next to her and uh, enjoying a laugh alongside Josie Muffley. Worked her way through it. Freshman out of Portland, Oregon. They have a lot of experience. The Seminoles, 11 players on the current roster were on their World Series team from two years ago. They just need the one win tonight. Well, thank you. Then a day off tomorrow to regroup, get ready for Oklahoma. Tennessee, if they win twice tonight, they will move on to play for the national championship. Four, five, and six. Edwin Field, a home run her first time up. All the runs on the board, courtesy of the long ball tonight. So we've got two freshman pitchers in the ball game right now. Hey, the NCAA Women's College World Series Championship Finals begin Wednesday night, 8 Eastern on ESPN. For more info and game times, go to NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. It's been a, an awfully good run for Florida State. You, you take out the disappointment of not making the World Series last year. How about the last four seasons? Two trips to the finals, the one national championship, two other times in the national semis, one of those still a work in progress. It may be a third time to the finals. Well, they're trying to come in on the hands of Edenfield after that last home run that was up and away, almost off the plate. That's what actually got Edenfield's hips starting to trigger open. Full count. Yeah, look at the home run swing. Now watch her hips. Watch them open up. You're going to see them kind of start open. See how they're already going. They're spotlighted there. Look at where the pitch is. Look at that reach. Anyone else, this is a pop fly to center field. For Michaela Edenfield, this clear center field by about 40 feet. Another 3-2 pitch, and Malloy on the run gets to it. One down, and a, a point out to Kiki, and a clap. All right, you got me on that one. I love that. Yeah, that's when gamesmanship can be a beautiful thing. We see a lot of chirping, a lot of going back and forth, but I love it when it's the respect. <laughs> hey, tip the hat. <laughs> Not much finds the grass out there around Kiki. <laughs> Malloy from the West Coast in Woodenville, Washington. Edenfield from small town Florida. Sneeds. Meeting here in the middle. Her eyes are awesome. <laughs> she does that every day. Mm -hmm. Different look. Devin Flaherty grounded a second or first time up. Twenty wins against ranked opponents for Florida State. When the schedule came out, they knew they would be playing twenty ranked teams. Nineteen of them on the road, including a trip here to play Oklahoma and Oklahoma State earlier in the year. Thank you, ma'am. 
all of their big ACC series were on the road. And after they lost three or four out here in the Sooner State, they had to head to Clemson to jump into ACC play. They went, on, they went in and whooped on the Tigers. Yep. And that's when Devin Flaherty said, OK, not just signaling everybody else, but that was when we truly started to feel like we could be dangerous. Not on that particular at bat, two down. Pickens with that 74 mile an hour velocity also has a an elite level changeup, and this is that changeup throwing on the inner half to Devin Flaherty, and it's hard to identify. Strike out looking. So here is the starting pitcher, Mac Leonard. Also in the lineup as a hitter here in the sixth spot, grounded out her first time up. What? I got it. I got it. <laughs> Christina Drum saying, I don't need to check anywhere else. I saw that one myself. <laughs> Leonard, hard shot to Donahue, jumped right up into a glove, makes the play. And a 1-2-3 inning for the freshman, Carlin Pickens. Holly will chat with Karen Weekly when we come back. Welcome back to the Women's College World Series. Florida State up 2-1 over Tennessee. Here with the Vols head coach, Karen Weekly. And coach, pitching's been a situation like we're having to use all hands on deck right now. Bringing in Carlin Pickens, what do you see from her? That was a great last inning. I mean, the velocity is tough for anybody, you know, especially the first time they see it. Um, she needs to just get the ball down a little bit, hit some spots. I think she can get some more swings and misses uh, if she can locate just a little bit better. Kiki Malloy has been your heart and soul at the top of the order. She's had some strikeouts and a line drive out. What do you see in Kiki that you want to get her unleashed right now? Kiki does everything for us. I mean, you saw the catch in center field. She makes great plays. We were just getting under her, and we've got to make that adjustment to get the barrel up and get it on plane a little bit better off of Reed. Thank you so much, Coach. Thank you. All right, Hallie, we're going to bring in our rules expert, uh, Christy Cornwell, to talk us through what exactly is illegal of the four pitches that were called such. Well, there are a couple of issues. Uh, one issue that they're calling is that back right foot, which is called the stride foot. Once she's in this position to take the signal, the only thing she can do with that right foot is step forward. And you can see she's making a small adjustment right there, which is illegal. And then when she jumps off the rubber, she's actually airborne. She's not dragging her foot. So there's two issues. Well, we've actually seen quite a few pitchers have that pivot foot up in the ground, up, up, up off the ground. So I, it's a rules change here. I think that there's always also been a lot of discussion on that, trying to figure out. Just to eliminate it, because if yeah. you're not going to call all season and now you're going to call it here, yeah. it's ridiculous. Kudos to Reed, who got out of that last inning with a strikeout to work out of a jam. Yeah, Tennessee left runners on the corners. Still down one. So Mac Leonard, who was the starter, is now trotting back out to the bullpen. She can re-enter. We've seen two other Florida State pitchers also working in the bullpen already tonight. And Leonard stays in the lineup because she now moves to the DP hole. I think the technical starter on the scorecard was actually McKenna Reed. And then she was subbed out so that Leonard would be the starter. So if Reed is removed from the game, there's a pretty good chance she could not return because she's already been removed once. It's kind of that 10 hole, how it yep. can be uh, used. Manipulated. Yes, yeah, manipulated for sure. Harding snags the pop up. Well, the other thing too now for, for Lonnie Alameda, if Reed can get through this inning, there's only three at bats left, yep. possibly in the Tennessee season. And so, if she can get nine outs from the rest of the bullpen, remember, Florida State only needs the one win tonight. Tennessee needs two. Here's Lair Boutte, grounded to short. We've talked about the 
the positive, the benefits, the home plate umpires who we can hear through the microphone doing a terrific job with instructing pitcher, catcher, and batter where that pitch was that missed. Yeah, that's always key to be able to make those adjustments as a pitcher. And you know the umpire saying that's a little high if it's on that inner half. Okay, did it miss on the inside corner or did it miss high? That pitch is a little high, bring it down. So then you know, all right, my corner is good. My height needs to be adjusted. Speaks to the hitting the spots and yes. the pinpoint accuracy that these pitchers have when they can call upon it. Muffley out on the grass and Janai says, I got it. Two down. That's what we're seeing, though. So many freshman pitchers on this stage that we've seen from quite a few different teams. And I thought Lonnie Alameda captured it perfectly with the word poise. It's Holly Rowe saying that to see her poise and her reaction. Yeah, especially when she only had one illegal pitch all year. And now all of a sudden you're on the stage and you've had four called. There's runners on base. Now remember, they changed that rule because it used to be when they there was a legal in. pitch that advance. the runners would advance. Yep. Exactly. So they changed it so that now it is just a ball or best outcome for the offensive team if the ball is actually put in play. Yeah, it's a big off season for the rules committee. They can make just a few simple adjustments that can be beneficial in a lot of different ways. I think pace of play is going to be a big one. I think they have to figure out what they want to do with the, with the pitching rule. Yeah, pitch timer will be one of the things they've discussed. And I think we're getting closer to the double first base. Yep. That would be a good one for the safety of the athlete. too, you know, the changing environment around college sports. So with the transfer portal, with, with the fifth year, which at, will end next year with that group of players, you know, the two starters tonight were portal, portal people. Yeah. And now the two relievers are both freshmen with an opportunity with a lot of coming and going. The one positive we, we see with that is so many players here told us that they've rediscovered the love of the game and the passion that for whatever particular reason where they were head run drop. We also have players that did stick around for four or five years yeah. at the same school and were critical to the success of their team getting back here. So there is always something to be said for that kind of loyalty. Oh, Julia Kutsianopoulos, two walks. She's had great at bats, too. See, battling off a bunch of different strikes. Fourth free pass given up by the uh, Florida State pitchers tonight. Two of those to Kutsianopoulos. Two to Boo. Holly? I always have a secret theory that catchers have a better eye at the plate because they're just so used to seeing the strike zone that's already happening in the game. And Julia also getting this walk, that tells you she's had a good eye at the plate, but she hasn't been a catcher very long. It just blows my mind that this is her first opportunity to catch at Tennessee. She'd never been a catcher before. And after a couple of times in the outfield, Karen Weekly was like, she is such an athlete. I need her touching the ball more than twice a game as an outfielder. She said she has such an intense feel for the game. I need her instincts. I need that feeling behind the dish. And you can see it also carries over to the at-bats. Well, especially, Holly, for a player that really is not swinging the bat particularly well in the postseason. She's given Tennessee a base runner both times she's come up tonight. And she's been their leader. That's exactly why Karen Weekly wanted her in the position she's in. Reed's starting to look a little more comfortable now.
It was in that Clemson series that we were talking about a moment ago where she got her first mm -hmm. start. But her first taste of the big time came through with flying colors. Mudge on it. A walk, but no damage done. Four in the books and a one run game. And the field reaches for one. Back it goes and out. Bethany Keene blasts one, and Bethany Keene just grabbed the lead. Couple of home runs for FSU, one for the Tennessee side as well as we move to the top of the fifth inning. The three seed leading the four seed. And now just nine outs away from a spot in the champ fall. Oh, that looks really good. In the champ finals against them Sooners right there who are obviously kicked back and relaxed. Winners of 51 games in a row. And they are back in the champ series for the fourth straight season. Zeta Pooney over the first one down. It's the bottom of the order here for the Knowles. Facing Carlin Pickens, who is back out there. Nice bounce back for Carlin, who got roughed up a bit with a short start against Oklahoma. And has come back strong tonight. Here is one of those home run hitters, Bethany Keene. She is a home run hitter. Hit her first of her career at Florida State. She can call herself that now. That's who I am. Yeah, first in two years. <laughs> Only eight more, she'll tie Smitty's season high. Back in her, back in her playing days. <laughs> that 32 ounce bat. Tell us about the technology in the dead ball days, Smitty. It's like hitting a pair of socks. Amazing how, uh, how far things have mm -hmm. moved forward. Now analytics everywhere, that's the big new thing, just like it's taken over baseball. Lonnie Alameda, one of its uh, Biggest benefactors and biggest supporters. Getting all the numbers into her game plans and their preparation at Florida State. Keen, back up the middle. Keep it in the infield, but that's it. And Bethany Keene is having herself a night. <laughs> 17 hits on the season. And two more in two at-bats here. Bethany Keene just going to get a pitch on the outer half and uses that hard dirt out in front of home plate. Lindsay Donahue. Nice dive up the middle, keep it on the infield, but you're not going to get Bethany Keene once that ball hits the ground a couple times. Second base, excuse me, second hit of the game for Bethany Keene. She can re-enter, get lifted once for a pinch runner in college softball. Autumn Belvi is out there at first. And it's Josie Muffley in the nine spot. At the plate, number 10. Josie already with a, a web gem tonight. Oh, she gets hit. That one wasn't even close. Two on for the Sooners. And here comes Mudge. <laughs> Look up Josie. Is that not a future firefighter or what? Like, it ain't no thing. Bat flip to the dugout. Take it off the calf. Well, for Josie Muffley, uh, her biggest fans, the Tallahassee Fire Department. Let's go, Lady Knowles. Go, Knowles. We're proud of you, Lady Knowles. We're behind you. Go get them. Let's go, Lady Knowles. Bring it home. Come on, Team 40, let's ride. Ah, that's their motto, Team 40, let's ride. 
And that is so adorable. Josie Muffley has been riding along with them almost every single day. She is in an EMT class. She has plans to become a firefighter when she's done. And every single game before the game, she takes a picture with the fire department shirt on the field, sends it back to her friends there to let them know that they are on her mind. So just wonderful symmetry there from the fire department. And Josie Muffley, who's been in some tough situations, but learning to be tough. Uh, it looks like we might have a pitching change here. We do. It's actually Rogers going to come on. Actually, Rogers is the senior, fifth year from Athens, Tennessee. The first team All American last year. And again, this season, 20 wins on the year. This is her seventh relief appearance. Well, Ashley Rogers, so much experience and so many pitches. She'll put drop ball in the lower half, rise ball as well at the top of the zone. She really can paint corners. And yes, she has an outstanding changeup. But look at all of these pitches. This is how she expands the zone. The out locations are actually outside the strike zone. That is the sign of an elite pitcher that you get your outs by getting hitters to chase pitches outside of the zone. And when you look at her heat map, her swing and miss, she does like to live in that upper half of the zone, inside to righties, away from lefties. Ashley Rogers, one of the most experienced pitchers in this game with a lot of movement, a lot of different weapons to attack the zone. 11 innings of work in this World Series, seven hits, three earned runs, and it's the top of the order for Florida State. In her relief spots this year, she has only allowed one inherited runner to score. There are two of them behind her right now. She's second in the country, Beth. Left on base percentage at 94%. Mudge doubled her last time up. Also grounded to second. Barely touching it. Only 100 batting average with runners in scoring position. And look at when you have 2K, two strikes. Woo. You're hitting under a buck against her. 0.78. That's how it should be. It's incredible. And I actually see so many hitters that we've seen such great offensive numbers that two strike hitting, some hitters go up. They're over 300. It just shows you how good Ashley Rogers has been in this time. Opposite way, West tracks it down the line. Two outs, runners will have to hold. And that'll bring up Janai Kerr. Janai's 0 for 2, struck out in the third. Looking to add to the lead. Healthy cut at that one, rise at the eyes. That's that rise ball that Ashley is so good at expanding the zone up. Out to center, Malloy, and that will drop in front of her. The runners were on the move, the throw to the plate, not in time. Bellevue scores, and Carter drives another one in. That's got to feel so good for Janai Kerr. She has been struggling at the plate in the postseason, and she takes this one. It's off the end of the bat. It's actually better that way. If she'd hit it on barrel, it probably wouldn't have been an out. Because Kiki Malloy catches everything instead of it dies right in front of her. A perfect opportunity to get another run on the board for Semos. And now two in scoring position for Kaylee Harding, who's 0 for 2. Harding, opposite way. Katie Taylor back into the sun, makes the catch. Jai Kerr, RBI single. It's a two run game with the top and Kiki Malloy.
national semifinal, bottom of the fifth, and the matchup we've been looking forward to all day. All-American Katherine Sandercock coming on in relief to face Kiki Malloy, Zeta Pooney, and Boo Gibson and the top of the Tennessee lineup. Well, this is this is what Kat Sandercock has trained for all year long. Lani, Al Lani Alameda has challenged her. Slow roll, hiring at third, got her one down. And so Sandercock can attack the entire zone. She has worked as a starter, a reliever, and it's that rise ball at the top of the zone induces the pop-up. How about lower half with the drop ball? Look at the way she really gets up on that front foot and gets over the top, that downward rotation and the out locations. Yet again, an elite pitcher that gets hitters to chase pitches outside the zone. So the outs are coming on pitches inside, outside. A couple of them sweep through the zone, but she induces the miss hits and is able to get those outs even when she's in the middle of the zone. This is the batter, though. Think about Zeta Pooney. I mean, Kiki Malloy, as much as we've talked about her, this is the hitter. She is the hottest hitter for Tennessee right now, and this is actually the matchup I circled. I wanted Sandercock versus Pooney. Homeward in the first. Grounded out in the third. And I think that's where they're going to attack her, Jess, because she does such a good job of working that outer half that First two pitches, hammering right underneath her hands. Which can at times be intimidating, because look at how far off the plate Pooney is with that open stance. It can be scary thrown in there. That's what I love about the maturity of Kat Sandercock. We saw her from her freshman year when Megan King was a senior. And one of the things about her was she was afraid to go inside. And now challenging one of the best hitters in this tournament right now. So you look at the swing and misses. So it's going to be up on that arm side, up in the zone. And then the drop, she tends to go to glove side. But right now, she is going more arm side with that drop ball to get Zeta Pooney out. She's good on both sides of the plate. Hitting 367 against the drop ball this year is Zeta. And how about Kat Sandercock? Five pitches, all strikes, two outs, retiring Malloy and Pooney. And this is just drop ball, getting on top of that left leg, driving that ball down. Look at the way this pitch is going to start about at the knees, and you can see the Pooney trying to hold up on it. Look at the rotation on this. You can see it over the top, that super slow-mo, that great spin. It's actually coming down and into Pooney. Holly? Well, this reliever role is something new for Catherine Sandercock. Lonnie Alameda broached it at the beginning of the year, and Catherine wasn't really feeling it. They did it early in the season, and there were a lot of struggles. There was a meeting with tears. She said, Coach, I'm so uncomfortable in this role. I'm so used to being the ace. But Lonnie said, trust me, this is going to come. And how about that trust by this player and her coach? Because now in the biggest moment of their season, she's ready. Facing Boo Gibson, the number three hitter. Well, and she's... Got nine saves, Holly, on the season. That's a new single season record, and that also pushed her to the top of the career saves list. Well, part of getting comfortable with coming in is learning how to come in, learning how to warm up mid-game, late-game, early-game. And those are all things that Sandra Cock was not used to. She was used to her start, her 30 minutes ahead of time, getting ready. Wow hammering the inside part of the plate, and that gets in your head as a hitter. And Boot Gibson taking longer walks towards the dugout. When you start counting outs as well, guys, if they can retire them in order the next couple of innings, they can avoid the top coming up again. Field tried to pull that one up off the shins. Yeah. 
Seeing the clock so routine oriented. Three pitch routine. Catherine Sandercock. Dynamite out of the bullpen retires Malloy, Pooney, and Gibson. Pat Sandercock showing why she's an All-American. Coming in late in this game, up by a couple runs, knowing that she needs to really work the zone, hammer, get the out, so that Florida State can stay on top, six outs away from punching their ticket to the natty. Eight teams showed up here on Thursday, and we are down to three. And it may just be moments away for Florida State. They are one victory away from getting into the finals for a third time. If Tennessee rallies to win this, they'll play again tonight. That would suit Oklahoma just fine. The Sooners are already in, and they will attempt the three-peat. Game one of the championship series after an off day tomorrow will be Wednesday night. Go Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. The decade of dominance continuing for OU into the championship series now seven times in the last 10 years, looking for a sixth title in the last 10 years. Nice birthday today for Tiara Jennings. She had the game winning hit. Smashing a curveball the opposite way. That's the best pitcher in the country. It's a heck of a birthday gift. Isn't that one of the cool things? Even the teams that don't end the season with the win the way they had hoped, we, we do get a glimpse of some of the young stars yeah. like Nigeri Kennedy, like Ruby Malin. Yep. The that, greatness. Uh, might be coming back here for three yeah. more years with their clubs. I love that. I like Carlin Pickens for Tennessee. Yeah. Mm. She's only going to get better. Yep. And fields aboard, Holly. Well, if the score holds, it would also set up a date with Lonnie Alameda and her former school. She actually played softball for Oklahoma, started her coaching career. That is a big piece of her history and who she is. And I promise you, if they do get into the champ series, I have the picture of her with the very biggest hair you've ever seen. <laughs> and as an Oklahoma softball player, so that would be a really kind of kumbaya moment. <laughs> well, the... Seminoles met up with the Sooners in the finals a couple of years ago. Actually won game one. They are one of just seven schools to have a World Series win over Oklahoma in the last decade. Sooners are 35 and 11 here. Runner goes. And another swipe for Florida State. And Amaya Ross. with a great job. Look at that turnover rate. She is just so quick, wasting no time, getting Amaya Ross down to second base, trying to put in some more runs up on the board. Karen Weekly over there with the first base umpire. Did she leave before the pitch was released? Megan Raymond says no. Well, stolen base of the year for Ross. There's Devin Flaherty. 0 for 2. Ashley Rogers, she'll live out there. It's just a little bit off the plate. This is where Julia Kusionopoulos, I know she's new to the position, but does a good job. Getting that shadow zone, 53%. It's that ball just off the plate. And that's where catchers really stand out to me. Second best here in the Women's College World Series in that number. And Stanford's Gold Glove winner. That's a left-handed catcher, too. Kelly Kanashiro. Yep. One-two from Rogers. 
It's the second time she's gotten Devin. One down, Ashley doing all she can to extend her career. She is the lone Lady Vol for sure who is done with her eligibility. Prize ball, top part of the zone. It's going up and away from Flaherty's. First strikeout for uh, Ashley Rogers since she came in in relief last inning. <laughs> Mac Leonard takes a look at strike one. Couple of infield grounders tonight so far for Mac. Who uh, started the day as the pitcher, now the DP. Mac threw two innings of work. Doesn't chase. Got the ACC champs and the SEC champs trying to meet the Big 12 champs to become the national champs. Off the jam. That was some fun strategy earlier today, watching Stanford walk Jada Coleman in the ninth inning to pitch to Tiara Jennings because Nyjah Kennedy had so much success striking out Tiara Jennings, and then Tiara able to burn her on the curveball for the game winner. When does that ever happen to Tiara in her life? And on the run, and making the catch is Katie Taylor. Ross wisely will advance. Two down. So the Seminoles trying to add another one here. Before Tennessee, the heart of their order, four, five, and six, come up in the bottom half of the sixth. Nice first pitch change up. Rogers just has so many tools, it's hard to split the plate. It's hard to look for one pitch because she's got so many weapons to go to. Waycaser gets a hold of one. That one's deep, and that one's gone. Two run shot for Florida State. And just the fourth of the year for Halley. So some unsung hero home run hitters tonight for the Noles. How about that for Hallie Waycaser? Remember back in 2021, she tore her ACL, so she wasn't on this team, but wasn't able to play. And she said, I cannot wait to get on this field and make an impact. Hit her fourth home run season she's hit zero throughout the postseason bottom of this lineup and that is why the smile so big she comes around third and I love how smart she was first pitch change at first strike she's probably thinking all right she's not going to come back to back she takes a rise ball and just attacks it home runs tonight from their seven and eight hitters That's crazy, too. I remember talking to Lonnie Alameda, and I was like, Hallie Winky, sir, you know, you don't have, like, okay, I've got information on her from a couple years ago, but what, what has she done this year? And she's like, I got one word, and it's clutch. She's like, she hasn't had a lot of them, but when she has, she's come up in the big moments. And how about the predictive understanding? And that's exactly what she did tonight. 
a 4-1 lead, and your stud in the circle. And four of the five on the board, thanks to the homers from Ray Kaser, Keene, and Edenfield. You know, this is a, just a complete Florida State lineup. You know, the second half of the lineup, so six, seven, eight, you've got Leonard. You've got Flaherty with the, the speed that can get on. Leonard behind her, and then Wake Kaser hitting over 300 in that seven hole. Mm -hmm. Round of the first, Boo Gibson steps on the base for the third out. Time's getting short for Tennessee as Waycaser goes wild. Take a look at the swing up to meet the rise ball. Smitty, you called it. She was sitting back. One pitch for number one, fourth home run to put the Knolls up, five to one. Plenty to celebrate so far tonight for Florida State. Six outs away from a spot in the finals. Three home runs powering them to the 5-1 lead. Can the Tennessee Bats wake up in time? Just the one run on the board on two hits. They do have 11 comeback wins so far this season, including one in this NCAA tournament. And a huge one during the regular season against Florida that was one of the turning points for them. Snagged by Harding. One down. Catherine Sandercock so good at first pitch strikes, putting in her pitches in a situation where they're not going to get hit too hard. And when they are, how about the positioning of the defense? Ronnie Alameda just always doing a great job of just knowing spray charts. Where's the strength of the hitter? If I'm coming inside, Harding slightly off, and in a position to catch that line drive in the 5 6 hole. Just so good, Jess, at yep. just every part of the game. And now understanding this part of the game, closing a game out. Here's Mackenzie Donahue. So just what we were just talking about. So Riley West, they throw to the inner half of the plate. Against Donahue, they're throwing to the outer half of the plate. And situationally, you can tell where the, the defense is going to be set up. So you'll see that Muffley will be more toward the middle. Harding, the third baseman, will be more off toward the 5-6 hole. And it all has to do with that, where the pitch location is. So as a hitter, a lot of times you know, okay, Tipsy. base, exactly, where's the, the defense set up? And you'll, you'll see, this is going to be Muffley, the shortstop. She's going to be up the middle. You'll see that Harding, the third baseman, is going to be in the 5-6 hole. Why? Because the majority of pitches are going to be out here to Donahue. So they know that she's going to spray middle away. And if she does get around the ball, that's where Harding is going to be in that 5-6 hole. Yeah, really hard to pull it down the line when everything's way out. O2 from Katherine Sandercock. Harding. And can't make the play. A little base runner for Tennessee. Oh, and she was in the right position. So they come back underneath the hands. They hit it right to Harding and unfortunately just goes off of her glove. But this is really what it's all about. This is your battery working with your defense in sync. How about Mackenzie Donahue too? I mean, all the way, they come inside. She's able to hit it hard enough. So I think they're going to give this a hit. Nope. No. Okay, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> nope, that's an error. All right, so a little something brewing here for Tennessee. It was a seven-run sixth well, inning in up. that Florida game midseason. They rallied to win, so they've come back from a large deficit before. 
but this has been the issue their last three games here at the World Series. They were the second leading scoring team in the country this year behind OU, but just four runs on six hits through, uh, what, 14, 19 innings now. Get here, get here, get here, get here. The throw to second in time. Wow. Talk about getting the lead runner and taking the heart out. <laughs> Bethany King having herself a game. I mean, it would be so easy to take this, pick it up, and run over to first. But look what she does. Not a lot of time with Donahue at first. And she's going to hammer this ball over to Josie Muffley, who's at second base. And, and that's how you win championships, getting lead runners in situations where it might be uncomfortable helping out your pitcher. It's a great defensive play. There's Lara Boutte. Nothing else. The error does mean that Kiki Malloy would be able to come up in the next inning. Even if they get the out here, she would be due up third. So there may be one more go round for the lethal top of this lineup looking to bust out. Back up the middle, base hit. how strong Lair Boutte is. If she doesn't get this on the barrel, she gets this off the hands. This is literally on the inside part of the bat, and you're going to see her just muscle. I mean, that is literally, you see the flex. Being able to take this when you get beat, but just enough. It's got to feel good for a hitter that hasn't been in the starting lineup for over two weeks. Yeah, and that's an 0-2 pitch. 0-2, uh, two strike hits. Tough to come by off of Kat Sandercock. It's impressive. Julia Kutsoyanopoulos. I guess maybe Karen Weekly is counting on Kutsoyanopoulos to draw a walk for the third time tonight. She does have the hot bat of Destiny Rodriguez in the dugout still that she could call upon. Here at the bottom of the order, that's the nine hitter Katie Taylor on deck. hammering that inside corner. Look at that, 22 pitches, 19 strikes, just three balls. That's efficiency. efficiency, but sometimes pitchers can be too much around the zone. The error was a 0-2 pitch. The base hit to Lair Boutte was a 0-2 pitch. Sometimes you got to expand that zone when you're in this count. Plus you got Zeta Pooney out. Made her chase the ball in the dirt. Kat Sandercock is taking too much time between pitches. So a ball awarded. One, two. Struck her out. Kat 
Xander Kai coming out of the bullpen and doing the work. And now Florida State is three outs away from moving on to the championship series. The big strikeout, Kat Sandercock coming back after that ball was called. The swing and miss from Julia Kutsoyanopoulos on a pitch way outside. A lot of times we see the Molony falling for Tennessee, but this one on the strikeout coming out of the back pockets of Julia. She had to pick him up before she went back to the dugout. Pitching change, and Tennessee goes back to Peyton Gottschall, who threw 45 pitches earlier tonight and re-enters, replacing Ashley Rogers in what might be the final appearance for Ashley. Tennessee is down five to one. They have one at bat remaining in the uh, bottom of this oh. inning in a must win game. If Florida State wins this, they play Oklahoma for the national championship starting on Wednesday night. Nine and then the top of the order. Oh, just bring that in. Home runs tonight from Michaela Edenfield, Hallie Waycaser, and Bethany Keene. The three home runs, one shy of their World Series record, set in the semifinals in 2018, en route to the national championship when they beat UCLA and got home runs from Warren, Gordon, Cheryl, and Herod. Beat UCLA twice in the semis to advance. And that will drop in for a base hit. First of the night for Josie, second time she's been on base. I love her hands. I know, that pitch was so far inside. They're just like, they stayed so close to her body, Smitty. I mean, to be able to hit, that's a pitcher pitch. Yeah. I mean, she, Peyton Gottschall, kudos to you for getting into her kitchen, but then Josie said, not so fast. Yeah. Mudge doubled in the third. Bottom of the inning, it will be the nine hitter and then the top with Kiki Malloy and Zeta Pooney for Tennessee. Pooney had the home run back in the first inning. Goes for the lead runner, Boutte, will get her. One down. Here's Janai Kerr, drove in a run with a single back in the fifth. It's been a day for the bottom of the Florida State lineup. Two home runs. Another run scored. And a slide for Mudge, her second stolen base. From what we talked about at the beginning of the game, how they can score with the power and with the speed. Yeah. Doing it all today. There was your power, here's your speed. Mudge going straight into the bag. You got mudged. You got Mudge. 18th stolen base of the year for Mudge. So Florida State adds to their NCAA tournament total now 17, best in the field. Kerr dropping down a beauty of a bunt. Two on with one out. This is an art. I don't think people realize how beautiful of a thing a bunt can be. We talk a lot about long goals, beautiful swings, but to be able to deaden the ball that's coming in high velocity with no throw. Tonight Kerr, Florida State put on the clinic with speed and short game. That'll give Kaylee Harding a chance to come up 0 for 3 tonight. 
came into this one batting 400 in the postseason. Kerr goes, she'll take second on contested. Holly? Well, Janai Kerr is just unbelievable. At just 5'3", she does a lot. Lonnie Alameda says she turns not so great at bats into something, but you also see that speed all county track and field. She was also varsity basketball at just 5'3". She's a great athlete in three different sports. Harding got under it. Malloy back and now coming in. And Mudge will backtrack to third on a dart from Malloy to the plate. I love the way that Mudge played that. Challenging Kiki Malloy and watching the throw as it comes in and she could see it was gonna be online so she smartly puts the brakes on and retreats back to third. But take a look, so this ball's not hit that deep and you know the arm of Kiki Malloy coming in, running through this, a dart home and you can see that Mudge Takes a look at that throw. Watch the way she's watching right there. Great base running. And a good look at Kiki Moy's arm, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why you don't run. Well, in her mechanics, like you've always said, Jess, right? She didn't just park underneath of it. She ran through it so she could have some momentum to make a nice throw. Here's Edenfield. Homered in the second, then walked, and her pinch runner scored in the sixth. Come around on a curveball, 3-2 curveball in the outer half. See how Tennessee pitches are differently. Just back to that inside corner. Drift out of play. Well, they get three of them out tonight, Jess. Think about how they did it, too. Michaela Edenfield, where to go? Where to go? Coming down. That was a monster bomb. And then Bethany King comes up, pulls one, line drive into that right center field gap. And how about the unexpected? Hallie Waycase there, the beauty down the left field line. All different ways, all the fields, spreading the love for Florida State. Even, even showed their home run trots on the Jumbotron. Did you see that? Did well done, well done. <laughs> they, had flash, yeah, they, they had flashes going off, cameras yeah. going off cameras in the, going in the off. crowd. So yeah. cool. I was still trying to no. wait for Edenfields to come down. I was like, and it's out of the screen, <laughs> and it comes back. No stone left unturned. If you had to pick who you thought the home run hitters would be at the start of the night, you probably wouldn't have picked those two. But hey, on this stage, who's going to step up? Well, tonight it was Keen and Waycaser and Edenfield. Close play. I don't know if she gets under the tag. Kuchinopoulos oh. didn't even yeah, check her. And is she sliding under the tag or does the glove get her on the knee? Oh, that looks out right there. They need video evidence to change the call. The right. call on the field was safe. Where does it get her leg? Looks like 
by a frame. One frame she looks out, one frame she looks safe. After further review, the call has been changed. She is out. So Mudge out at the plate. On the tag by Kuptoyanopoulos. Right there. Got her by a spike. So to the bottom of the seventh, 5-1 FSU. Malloy and Pooney picking up their bats. Eyes on the prize. Sight set on a trip to the championship series for Catherine Sandercock and Florida State. Their all-time saves leader will try and shut this thing down and get a date with Oklahoma in the finals. 5-1 Seminoles over Tennessee. But Catherine Sandercock will have to deal with the two most dangerous hitters in the Tennessee lineup. Kiki Malloy do up second, Zeta Pooney do up third. Pooney has their one run, a solo blast in the first inning. And Taylor will try and get a runner on for him. Florida State a win, and they are into the finals. Tennessee needs a big rally to force an if necessary game later tonight. Started the game, McKenna Reed, middle relief. And now Sander Cock with her third inning of work. Has struck out three, allowed just one hit. <laughs> Drop ball just disappearing. Sander Cock has a chase rate on the majority of her pitches in the mid 40s. When she gets up to two strikes, it jumps all the way up to 53% chase rate with those two strikes. Expands the zone. The last four years, the national semifinals have been so wild and so topsy-turvy. This would actually be the first time since 2017 that two teams got through the tournament undefeated here in OKC to get into the final. Oklahoma's 3-0 here. Florida State is 2-0 here. They'll reset on Wednesday night for a best two out of three series. And a strikeout for Sandercock. One down. It's just where she's so good. She, she hammers drop, drop, right. drop. <laughs> and then comes back with an elite rise ball. She's just not one-dimensional. This is a rise ball upstairs, inside, well located, always on the fringe of the strike zone in that what we call shadow zone. You're looking down, you're looking down all throughout this at bat when she comes up. All right, so here we go with Kiki Malloy. 0 for 3, she's only seen six pitches tonight. Be careful with that drop ball with Kiki Malloy. And I know it's be careful with, you know, blank. She hits everything. But 83% drop ball from Sander Cock. Kiki Malloy batting almost 400 against that pitch. Something that she has handled well all season long. Yes, they knew that too. <laughs> <laughs> she has been ahead of hitters all night long. And her velocity, just so good in the upper 60s, not throwing through her spins. You know, you've seen 70 miles an hour, 70 plus miles an hour cat. Just very quick with her delivery. Yeah. 
Malloy out to center field. Kerr is there. And they hold Kiki Malloy to an 0 for 4 night. Two down and FSU one out away from the finals. And that last chance is Zeta Pudi, the home run hitter in the first. Pooney, Muffley got there. And the championship series will be a rematch of the 2021 final. The Seminoles are back playing for the national championship. Just a complete game for Florida State. Great pitching, clutch hitting, really good defense. I love the bottom of this lineup. I mean, we talk so much about stars and the fact that home run hitters coming from Florida State, how this team did it to get here, a pitching staff, they showed that in this one, and then the defense, Josie Muffley, the big hug to Katherine Sandercock, getting the last out. So Sandercock gets her 10th save. Reed gets the win, fighting through the illegal pitches in uh, those middle innings. Fabulous career for Ashley Rogers at Tennessee comes to a close for the All-American from Athens, Tennessee. She's going to do some great things, too. Oh, yeah. And the celebration for Muffley and Mudge and Sandercock and Edenfield. And they will have the day tomorrow to get ready to face Oklahoma winners of 51 games in a row.